is a pressure cooker. This is what we use to make rice as you already know. And interestingly, this is very similar to how the inside of the earth operates. I'll show you how a pressure cooker works first. You put raw rice in a vessel with some water. As the water boils and the rice starts cooking, the rice puffs up and it occupies more space. It pushes up against the air and the air is trying as hard as it can to get out of the cooker. Thanks to the little opening in the lid, all the pressure is let out slowly. But imagine, if you didn't have this opening, all the pressure that is created by the steam cannot escape and keeps building up. Well, after a point, the lid would no longer be able to handle the pressure and it would just explode. Oh dear, that certainly looks like a pressure cooker that I wouldn't like to use. Hey, but what if I told you that nature has its own pressure cooker? Do you know that there are openings on the earth's surface that act as pressure vents? Yes, I'm talking about Volcano A volcano is a vent in the earth's crust through which molten material under the earth erupts suddenly, just like the steam. But unlike steam, this hot material that volcanoes spew out are mostly molten rocks and minerals. And this material is called magma. The magma passes through the cracks in the Earth's crust and then flows out through the vent of the volcano. So these cracks act as channels for the magma to be transported to the surface. On the other hand, the vent acts as the mouth of the volcano. The hot magma has another name once it reaches the surface of the Earth. It is then called lava. Hmm, so now that we know what a volcano is, we should ask, how are they created? What creates these massive mountains of molten material? Well, the volcanoes are generally created when two lithospheric plates come together. Sometimes, if one plate is heavier than the other, it goes below the other one. Two gigantic lithospheric plates and one going underneath the other one. How does that happen? Okay, let's do one thing. Let's call the plate that goes under as plate 1 and the one that stays above as plate 2. So when plate 1 starts moving below plate 2, it moves slowly and eventually reaches the mantle of the earth. And as you know, the mantle is extremely hot. So when plate 1 comes in contact with the heat of the mantle, it starts melting and becomes molten magma. This creates pressure inside the earth. Now once this pressure gets too high, it tries to find a way to escape. So, due to the rising pressure and heat, this molten material or magma rises up through the cracks in the earth. It then shoots out as lava and steam and rocks, which we see as volcanic eruptions on the surface of the earth. Hmm. I know what you're thinking. That sounds pretty scary, right? And till now, we have only discussed the stuff that happens inside the earth. But what happens on the surface? When volcanoes erupt, the whole area around the eruption experiences some changes that are spooky to say the least. The ash clouds from the volcano 
blanket the skies entirely making even the brightest day seem like the darkest night most accounts of volcanic eruptions also talk about heavy rains that follow the damage and destruction to life and property is beyond what anyone could imagine anything that comes in the way of these raging rivers of fire get engulfed by their might even in recent times there have been some dangerous volcanic eruptions in the world mount sinabung in indonesia spewed huge columns of ash up to heights of over 7 kilometers and residents in the area were told to wear special masks to keep themselves safe from the harmful gases in papua new guinea a country just below the equator near indonesia the ulawon volcano began spewing ash and turning the sky dark at the end of june 2019 the disaster management officials urged residents to evacuate the area and look for safer havens with time as we learn more about volcanoes we try our best to reduce the number of casualties in these violent events now based on how often volcanoes erupt they have been classified as extinct dormant and active not all volcanoes are explosive all of the time There are some others that have not erupted in a long long time maybe about 10000 years these volcanoes have been inactive for so long that they can basically be considered dead these are called extinct volcanoes mount thilsen in the state of oregon in the united states is an example that comes to mind then There are dormant volcanoes that have not erupted recently but it is expected that they may erupt again. You can think of these as volcanoes that are sleeping. In fact, that's what dormant means. There's one in Japan called Mount Fuji. The volcanoes that erupt often are called active volcanoes. You can think of active volcanoes as powerful and energetic. Mount Etna in Italy is an example of one of these.